So this end of year update has hit, and with it comes a lot of changes to the game, along with many, many new items and features that are just going to make Team Fortress 2 more enjoyable to play for the community. It's very exciting, and let's get to it. First and most importantly, contracts are back, and just like Gunmetal, they will require the purchase of a pass to participate. For $5.99, you get access to a total of 26 contracts over the course of three months. These contracts can now be weapon-specific, and if you do not own the required weapon for the specific contract, then the TF team has implemented a new system called the Loaner Program. During the entirety of the contract, you will be loaned the weapon for free. While completing contracts, you will be rewarded either reskinned weapons or cases that can be opened with keys. A total of four new weapon collections have been added, and with these collections come some incredible looking skins, however they are all stock weapons. First are the two contract collections, which as the name states are the types of weapons that you will get while completing contracts. The first is called the Gentleman's Collection, which includes the Coffin Nail, Scatter Gun, Grenade Launcher, Sticky Launcher, Minigun, Sniper Rifle, Flamethrower, Minigun, Revolver, and Shotgun. The Dress to Kill, Minigun, Knife, Medigun, Pistol, Sticky Launcher, Sniper, and Wrench, the High Roller SMG, Medigun, Rocket Launcher, and the Top Shelf Revolver, Knife, Grenade, Wrench, and Minigun. The second collection for the contracts is called the Harvest Collection, and while we take a look at some of these skins, keep in mind that I get the feeling that some of these skins were meant to be part of Scream Fortress of this year, and for some reason well, they were just delayed. But the Harvest Collection comes with Autumn Grenade, Wrench, Rocket Launcher, and Shotgun, Macabre Web, Grenade, Minigun, Pistol, Sticky, Scattergun, and Revolver, Nutcracker, Flamethrower, Scattergun, and Minigun, Wildwood, Medigun, Sniper, Revolver, and SMG, Boneyard, Revolver, Wrench, and Sniper Rifle, and Pumpkin Patch, Sniper Rifle, Sticky Launcher, and Flamethrower. Aside from the collections that you can get through completing contracts, you will also get cases that can be opened up with keys while also completing contracts. The weapons you can get from the cases, however, are of two separate collections, aside from the ones that you can get by just completing contracts and not having to purchase keys. The two case collections are the Pyroland collection, which include the Flower Power Revolver, Scattergun, Shotgun, and Medigun, the Blue Mew Rocket Launcher, Scattergun, SMG, Knife, and Pistol, the Mr. Cuddles Minigun, the Brain Candy Rocket Launcher Pistol Minigun and Knife, the Stab to Hell or Shot to Hell depending on the type of weapon, Knife, Wrench, Pistol, and Scatter Gun, the Sweet Dreams Grenade Launcher and Sticky Bomb Launcher, the Balloonicorn Sniper Rifle and Flamethrower, and the Rainbow Flamethrower Grenade Launcher and Sniper Rifle. The Wayward Collection, which is based off of the Soldier, includes the Blitzkrieg Medigun Revolver Pistol SMG Sticky Bomb Launcher and Knife, the Warhawk Rocket Launcher Flamethrower Grenade Launcher, the Airwolf Knife, Sniper Rifle, and Wrench, the Corsair Medigun and Scattergun, the Butcher Bird Minigun and Grenade, the Killer Bee Scattergun, and the Red Bear Shotgun. And as you complete contracts, you will level up something called your Stamp. Now this is very similar to what was seen as the Gunmetal Campaign coin, and it will just be displayed on any scoreboard next to your name to be able to show other players how far you are through your contracts. On top of that, a Tough Break Cosmetic case was added, holding 15 cosmetics. Also, four community favorite maps have been added. Like Gunmetal, these maps might not stick throughout the entirety of Team Fortress's life and might be removed at the end of the campaign, but these maps will more than likely have to do with the contracts you complete. The maps include Payload Snowy Coast, Capture Point Vanguard, King of the Hill High Pass, and finally, Capture the Flag Landfall, a favorite of mine and the first real new Capture the Flag map that's been added since I think 2009. Three new taunts were added and one of which was officially made by Valve and was not community made and even though these were leaked in unlisted YouTube videos yesterday, it is still very nice to be able to see these confirmed. The taunts are the Bucking Bronco, the Bad Pipes, and my favorite, the Man Robix. I might find this funny now, but the same way I felt with the Conga and Square Dance, this will probably get on my nerves as time goes by. Now there were many balance changes added to the different weapons and classes, but there are so many that we will have to talk about these in more detail at a later date. Now some of you may be wondering where the Smith Miss 2015 items are, and unfortunately it's a bit weird and it's not the same as past festive events, but here's how it works. You're going to be able to get a hold of what's called the Smith Miss 2015 mystery gift, however it can only be found by opening a tough break weapon case. So it seems like the only way you're going to be able to find any of the 
the naughty or nice themed items is by opening up one of the Tough Break weapon cases, which does require a key. Whether or not this is a good idea or whether or not this will work is going to be seen in later times, but that is how Smithmas 2015 is going to work. And with the update also comes the normal Smithmas stuff, such as the Spirit of Giving, the Gift Stuff Stocking, and the Witzer Holiday Noisemaker. There is now a craftable Strange Transfer tool also added, which allows you to transfer the Strange Kills number from one weapon to another, and these are craftable using two Strange parts in the crafting menu. Also, it seems like a lot of performance updates have hit within this update, but like with the balance changes, these are very specific and there are quite a few of them, so we're gonna have to go over these in a separate video. That was all the information I could give you on the Tough Break update besides the balance changes, which we will talk about at a later date. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike this video, hit the dislike button. If you have any more complaints or compliments for me, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you want to support these videos, I am doing a Patreon campaign. Link to that is down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and as you know, I'm Tyler McVicker. This is Valve News Network. Have a good day. Adios.